everyone. Thank you once again for tuning in to the Funny Business Podcast. If, if, you're, if you are a returning listener, thanks for tuning back. If it's your first time, hope you have fun. We have a great episode for you guys today. And Mike, before we get started, I would just like to announce, because this seems like everybody's doing it, I would like to announce I am officially not running for President of the United States. Oh, Matt, I literally had everything set from your social media campaign to your fundraising campaigns. Like, why why pull out immediately? Like, I don't get that. No, that's definitely not in my interest to, to lead this country. I just, I'm not qualified for that. It, it just seems like everybody is now running for president. I guess that's the thing. And actually, I was thinking of this. It would be cool if, like, people shouldn't say they're running for president of the United States. They should, like, make videos saying you're not running for president of the United States. Because those would be funny videos to watch. People could, like, pimp them out, have, like, press conferences why they aren't. That would actually be funny. I thought you were going to say we were going to have, like, blind candidates. So it's, like, love is blind, but it's, like, voting is blind. Like, kind of having that oh, aspect. I, I kind of <laughs> like that idea. That's that's not a bad idea at all. Well, Matt, uh, we're going to jump, like, as if we were jumping to November for an election day. Um, we certainly have a great guest on today's podcast. Um, for those who are first-time listeners, you certainly stumbled upon our podcast for uh, a, a good one and for those who are returning you are well aware that we usually bring some guests on the podcast itself but lo and behold I will introduce this uh, wonderful individual that's coming on today's podcast uh, he comes from the favorite app that Matt and I love to talk about and we both follow him on the app he currently has over 870,000 TikTok followers and has over 6,000 6, let me say that correctly 6,000 subscribers on YouTube You'll find him asking his, quote, mom or dad to help in his videos, and he tries to go to Hooters occasionally. Uh, you can find his content online by searching Trevor Abney, but we are so excited to have him on the podcast today. Trevor, thank you so much for joining us today. Awesome to be here, guys. Thank you for having me. We are we are so happy to have you on today's podcast, and, uh, you know, really this episode, we want to find out some things about you and uh you know almost some more topical stuff things that people would know but kind of to start off with our podcast trevor um let's take some time to introduce yourself you know some things you want people to know about you um kind of your content because uh you know obviously tiktok and youtube are two kind of your primary uh platforms and just seeing mm -hmm. you know if people would be interested in following you after this podcast yeah so um let's see well i guess i'll talk about myself more and then the content more um, so I, uh, I'm 20 years old. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, not a lot of people from where I'm from do stuff like this either. So that's kind of an interesting thing. It's mostly, uh, on the coast is what I've noticed. Everyone that I meet doing this is from one of the coasts. Um, I played baseball, I played college baseball. I don't go to school anymore now. Um, that's really it as far as that. Um, I coach a baseball team right now that's really what i do aside from TikTok. i mean i kind of just do that volunteering because i wanted to kind of be in the in the baseball um industry just not really industry but i wanted to be involved with baseball um and i always have been involved in baseball so it's kind of hard to get away from it so i i was i'm coaching now and i do the TikTok stuff and it's just kind of like it's just taken off and eventually i'll be doing this full time hopefully and yeah and so basically what i post on tiktok is comedy um i post long face if anyone watching this knows the long face filter i post long face filter stuff i post other comedy stuff now um, i'm kind of getting away from the long face and um focusing on making my face the brand rather than a filter and just comedy because the way i think of it is that what I want to do in the long run is YouTube and all social media and people seeing my face as a filter. Um, it's not really helping my actual face be, be on people's minds, so to speak, I guess. Um, so I, I've been trying to get away from the filter. Everyone loves that obviously. So I'm not going to stop doing that and I still do it, but, um, yeah, I've been trying to get away from the filter in that sense. Um, I just started YouTube. I have three videos. I'm actually, editing my fourth video now from 4th of July. So that should be up probably tomorrow or something. And yeah, YouTube, YouTube has been more of a grind definitely than TikTok. It's a lot more editing. Um, it's a lot more, it's a lot more technical and putting, putting things together. Um, like a plot, 
like uh, like making a story out of it. So it's it's definitely a lot harder. But I'm I, I'm four videos down, so I'm still a rookie. But I uh, I'm starting to get the hang of of the storyline of a video, so to speak. You're um, you're absolutely preaching to the choir as far as the video editing process. So. <laughs> It's freaking hard, man. <laughs> Especially these, you know, the, the the podcast videos. It's, you know, kind of for me, I guess a background on me, my undergrad was in communication. So I literally went to four years of university just going through and learning how to video edit and all that stuff. So I definitely see you in those beginning stages of that. So I, I definitely give yeah. you all the credit for, um, you know, just putting the grind in and in the time itself. Yeah. I mean, you got to start somewhere even... I mean, my, I know I'm going to look back in a year and be like, God, that was horrible. Like the editing <laughs> and all that stuff. But I mean, it's, you got to start somewhere. Absolutely. Now, now Trevor, you, you kind of talked about the, the process of, you know, kind of the, the YouTube grind as far as the, the, the content that you post, but um, let's kind of focus on something that let's say a little bit more of a, a veteran at the moment is TikTok. Um, kind of talk about what goes into making your TikTok. You know, I know some people literally have a notebook that people write all their ideas down. Um, Matt literally makes them all in his drafts. And then he's like, oh, like what draft should I post today? Like kind of go through your process and your mindset as far as how your content is produced. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, so I, it, it takes a while to think of the ideas, especially the long face ideas now, because at first they were relatable kind of things that everyone went through as a kid. Um, for example, I use, I always use when I'm talking about this, the example of, everyone was a kid in elementary school and did went to the nurse's office and wanted to go home, like lie to their parents said their stomach hurt or whatever. Um, so at first it was more relatable stuff like that. And then I kind of, I kind of moved off once I stopped thinking of ideas for relatableness. Um, as easy as I was, I kind of moved into the comedy where it was like screaming and it was almost like developing the character of like a little shithead kid. Um, uh, and so I got into that and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that the, the hardest part is thinking of the ideas. It takes me like, as far as the long face videos, it only takes me like five, less than five minutes to make the actual video, but thinking of the skit and trying to hit core emotions with people, which are, uh, laughter and, um, relatableness, which I think a lot of people on the app are there for. Um, I think that's, that's definitely the hardest part of the process. I think you both Matt and I, uh, again, big fans again, but certainly we, <laughs> it's either us at 11 o'clock at night <laughs> laughing when we're just about to go to bed or, uh, you know, we find something new and something that's totally uncalled for, but your content's yeah. always on our feed. So, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So, so you've talked about how you use the long face videos and people might remember your dad videos, your mom videos, more of the series that you've done. Is yeah. there a favorite one that you've done that you had the most fun making? Yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. The Hooters ones, because I like though. So I had those videos go, I was at 200,000 followers, I think from the mom stuff. And I started the dad stuff. And I think it was part six or seven of the dad when, um, I did, the. Uh, I'm trying to think. So I did a Hooters one at night and I kind of woke up and it was blown up. It had like three or 4 million views. And then the next day I made another one and it had like three, four, 5 million views. And that, I think that got me almost 200,000 followers that night just from those alone. And then, yeah, I mean, those were fun to make and people, people that own Hooters around me have DM me and been like, yo, if you ever need any wings or any, ever want to make videos in our restaurants, just shoot me a DM and I'll let you know. I think, I think that's those two are probably my favorite when that happened because to see that growth and to see everyone loving it and to see all the feedback and um, I mean all it, it all kind of it, it all kind of it's not necessarily my favorite video to make but the the whole process of watching it all happen and growing that quickly um, it definitely it definitely made made for that to be one of my favorites and that kind of those kind of three days right there were definitely three of the days that i won't forget because um i mean two hundred thousand followers i wouldn't consider i wouldn't really consider i was at 150 200 000. i wouldn't really consider that you know big i was getting like 500k views on each of my mom videos every once in a while one would get like one or two million but after that um I, it kind of it kind of made me there forever type thing like 
everyone knew who I was after that and everyone was watching. And then people, so people would watch those dad videos, click on my profile because they would see dad part seven and they'd be like, oh, okay, these are funny. Like, let me go watch the other ones. And they would go watch the other ones and then they would kind of get lost in the page. And then they would be fans of everything, the mom, the dad, the everything that I was doing. Yeah. So I, 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 I guess you could say those are probably my favorite. I remember that the first time I think you posted the video of you standing outside of Hooters and then you showed it like you were outside the restaurant. And I was like, holy shit, like he's at Hooters. Like it was just like so awesome to see like you progress to actually like getting a connection with them. Yeah, literally that I posted that video. It was literally just me standing in front of a Hooters sign and I laughed and I said, Dad, where are you or something? And it got like 120,000 likes. Like it was like nothing, but people love it. <laughs> Well, damn, I, my question is, do you get recognized at Hooters? Well, it looks like that's already kind of out of the window with your... <laughs> yeah, 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 they knew. I was actually in uh, Columbia, Missouri, which we were there for a baseball tournament, and our hotel was right by that Hooters. And I was like, oh, we're going to have fun with this. And I walked in there, and they like, they all, most of them knew who I was. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it was pretty cool. That was it, too, like, to... to kind of like build off that it's just like weird getting recognized in, in public now especially because i use the long face so much it's it's people people the the vast majority of people know my face in that filter so it's kind of weird getting recognized when i'm like wait my face is in the filter but i mean i guess and and that also goes back to what i was saying not a lot of people from st louis do this type of thing so when someone does i guess everyone in st louis kind of kind of like knows in a way but yeah it's so weird getting recognized and stuff just randomly that's awesome now now trevor you did talk about you know some numbers as far as the follower engagement and the, and the likes engagement um you you said in a, a previous video um actually a previous podcast that that we kind of listened to to come up with some questions that um you said that you knew you were going to be successful when you hit about 500 followers is that correct is that something of the confirmation for that yeah like i i don't even know i knew i i freaking knew it was gonna happen i have no idea i just like like it, it was so weird it, it, i just kind of thought of it as because when i was at like 500 followers and then i did this thing where i was like putting a quarter and a half for every follower i gained and then i was going to give them all away Cause I wanted to get to a thousand followers because to me, I had a buddy that had 40,000 at the time. And now I think he has like 220,000 or something like that. And he's from St. Louis. And I remember meeting him off Craigslist cause I was buying a monitor from him for my PS4. And we talked about it for a while and he was telling me, yeah, I make money from donations off live. So in my mind, when I was at 500 followers, I was like, Oh crap, that's the only way to make money. I just got to get to a thousand followers. And I'm set. And so I was just so desperate to get to a thousand followers. And after I got to a thousand, it was kind of around that time when I was like, when people were, there was like three or four people in the lives and I actually saw people being like, yo, like you say my name, all this stuff. And it was just kind of cool to hear that. Um, but I'm not really a guy to be like, like even now I would say, I would say once you get to half a million followers on TikTok at least and in between 500,000 and like 2 million range, I would say that would be clout. And then after that, I would consider that I would consider like three to five million plus like actually being famous because TikTok, it is easy to gain. It's easier than a lot of other platforms to gain followers, but it's not, it, it's, I, I, I hate saying it's easy, but it's easier than YouTube than Instagram than anything like that because your videos are always going out for new eyes to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it was funny because yeah. um, with, with your, I, I'd say your, your interview that you said 500 followers that kind of made you know um my, my father believe it or not uh has about 900 followers and has more likes on tiktok than me and matt combined is that is that correct yeah matt? uh no so, not likes not likes <laughs> he's even <laughs> laughing about it but just like it, it almost questioned me i was like so like should my dad just like drop everything and like pursue this or like i kind of was like wanting to hear that you know sense of, of validation that like you were going to be successful and i i think you answered that well as far as what were some of the things that validated you yeah 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 i mean for sure i think i think i i just like knew. i don't know what it was i just like knew and i've always been a guy like i it, in the, this is like nothing against what anyone else wants to do, but I've always been a guy. I just hate school. I always got in trouble in school. I never, I never applied myself. I just hated it. And I knew I was going to do something besides something with a degree. I mean, if I didn't play college baseball, I wouldn't have even gone to school. 
or to college at least. And I mean, I just kind of, I just kind of was like, all right, I, I'm going to do something that's not related to school. I'm not going to sit in an office. I'm not going to, you know, do manual labor. I'm going to do something cool and like something that I can meet a bunch of cool people and do stuff like this. And um, so I kind of just was determined to make it happen. I actually posted my first TikTok and I think October of 2019 or yeah, 19. And I think that was when it was, but yeah. And then that one, kind of i think it got eight thousand views and it was so cool to watch those views go up for the first time because um typically on your first tiktok videos the algorithm like pushes if you're a new account and you make a video the algorithm like is in your favor and they push your video more just to like see if you're like if people like what you're what you posted or whatever so looking back on it now it's kind of like well that's kind of just what happens to everyone's first video but it was so like addicting to see the views go up for some reason i just remember watching like refreshing and being like oh my god another hundred views another hundred views and so i posted that i posted like maybe 10 more and then i kind of stopped i wasn't i mean i wasn't really into it at all and that at that point i wasn't like thinking anything of it and then i kind of started again at the end of december of 2019 and then i really started i think i hit 10k maybe at the be at the end of january of 2020 and then um that was when people from around here were like yo you're tiktok famous and i'm like 10k is not that many followers like but and and to be honest like you could have 200k followers but if your views are like a thousand views two thousand views it's not really anything and that's what happened to me i was at like 10 20k and i was getting like 800 views a video it's not i was just randomly would have a video go viral this and that and um but i mean i was just trying to stack them up and 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 make it happen and i i can't i literally couldn't tell you what it was that made me knew that i was gonna um eventually get a bunch of followers and stuff but i i mean i knew it i had no idea how though so so dad if you're if you're listening to this podcast you heard it from one of the best i i don't think at the moment is not the best for you, but those two off videos that you have is not a good idea to go for. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to send me his profile. Oh yeah, I will. I, I will for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, so one of the other things that I love that you do is your duet videos. Uh, so for people that don't know TikTok or they're trying to get used to TikTok, you can duet a video and kind of like do a live reaction to it. And you, you've done a lot of them and they're pretty, they're funny and interesting. Is there something specific that you look for in a video to do a duet or is it more so like it's the typical someone makes it specifically to be a duet? Yeah, no, I, I, I just look for, I mean, that's that's really hard to say. I just look for a random video that I think I could add something to really. I mean, there's not really much to that, I would say. Um, but yeah, those are those are fun to make. Those are really fun to make. Um, so a lot of people that come to TikTok maybe have, have come from Vine or think it's going to be the same for Vine. Did you have a Vine at all at any point? No. I watched I watched Vine and I watched Musically, but I never made anything because I was afraid of like people. Because people are so like once you start putting stuff out on social media, people are so like judgmental. It's like it's, it's just dumb. I, I don't know why. It's just. But I was just so afraid of like getting judged. Like I mean, even if you post, even if when I was in high school, I post something that someone didn't like in my Snapchat story or stuff, you would just get roasted at school or whatever. And it was just it was never really worth it to me. But I always I always kick myself for not starting that stuff earlier because i mean you look at logan paul jake paul all that type of stuff i mean they started on vine they didn't care what anyone thought and that's kind of eventually i was just like i really don't give a crap what anyone thinks and i mean people do like people people all the time are like just like say stuff and um don't don't really approve of it like it's it's subtle disapprovement like you wouldn't if you weren't me you wouldn't see it but you can just see like people that i used to talk to a lot don't really they're like yeah that's kind of weird like they don't really like want to associate with him anymore like and it's subtle things it's not like people are just like screw you it's it's more just like subtle things that only i would notice but uh, yeah i mean i just really don't care and the people that the people that support it and the people that i kind of knew would support it are still you know like my best friends and stuff so um, but yeah, I mean, that's like going back to what you said, I, I kick myself every day for not doing vine or, uh, musically earlier. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. What's, what's your favorite vine or one of your favorite vines? Oh, um, I don't know if it's a vine or not, but there's a, there's a, there's a guy that 
is in a you've probably seen it. It's the it's the um I forgot what, exactly what he says, but he's it's the backup Terry. He's, <laughs> lighting, up. he's yeah. lighting a firework in the wheelchair, and then he he can't move his wheelchair, and, and the, everyone screams, "Back up, Terry! Back up!" I love that one. I don't know if that's a vine or not. I think it is. I, I think it is. We were literally just talking about that like five <laughs> minutes before you came on, just because it's the Fourth of July weekend. No, that's that's an yeah. all time classic video. Yeah, I love that one. All time classic. <laughs> Um, so moving maybe away from TikTok, you said you, you'd played college baseball. What was your experience like playing college baseball? Do you still like have a lot of friends from that time? Oh yeah. I, I mean, I was on probably the best travel team in St. Louis, the, uh, the Rawlings Tigers. And that's who I coach for now. And when you're at that, I mean, I wasn't like, I went to a division two. I wasn't like a phenom by any means, but I played with a lot of phenoms and stuff. And I was always good in high school. And I mean, everyone kind of knows everyone when you get to that point, everyone works out with everyone hits with everyone. Um, especially now that we're in college. I mean, I still go and hit almost every day with, with my, with my old buddies and, um, teammates and stuff. Um, but yeah, so I went to a division two Northwest Missouri state and played there for half a semester. And then I came home at semester freshman year and I didn't play for a semester. And then sophomore year, I played all year at um, a junior college in St. Louis called Merrimack, St. Louis Community College. And we were pretty good. And um, I mean, you, you make like you make best friends doing that stuff when you're working out every morning and then going to class with them and then practicing and traveling and all this stuff. You make you make best friends. And I mean, all those guys are I would say those are my like best, best friends, my baseball guys and stuff, because you go through it together. You struggle together, so it makes you it makes your bond stronger. So, so I was doing some research, and if I have this right, did you play a game at Bush Stadium where where the Cardinals play? How how was yeah. that? That was awesome. Um, that was actually my. A lot of kids play um, in their high school from or when they're in high school, they play at Bush Stadium. They play like the big rivalry high school, like. Um, I mean, you wouldn't know the high schools. I don't even know why I was going to bring that up. But it, it's like the rivalries um, come together at Bush and play, and it's just kind of like a just a special thing for the high school kids to do. And I, we never did that. At, I went to Parkway West, and we never did that. So it was cool to play there at, for uh, Merrimack, and it was a big fundraiser. It helps us out a lot every year. I mean, that's our that's our main fundraiser where we raise our money. And at a junior college, we don't really have much money. So it's all through uh, player fundraising. So we had to sell tickets and do this and that, but it was awesome. I mean, I played, I think I played, he had to get, there was 40 kids at our, on our team. He had to get everyone in obviously. Um, so I think I played three innings in center field and I hit twice and it was, it was awesome. And, and cause a lot of, almost everyone on my team had already played there and that was my first time. So it was really cool. And we ended up winning like 15 to nothing. It was, we, we played some, like men's league um, baseball team. It was age range of 16 to 40 years old or something. So it was just all over the place, but um, it was really, really fun. Yeah. I I remember, I remember walking on like a distant minor league field for the first time and you're like in awe of like how, how big and huge it is. I couldn't even imagine like what a major league stadium feels like being on the field. Yeah. I couldn't. And even after playing at Bush stadium, I couldn't imagine when all the seats are filled up. I mean, that would be a totally different monster. Absolutely. No, no dingers. Uh, unfortunately, is that correct? No, no, no. I think I, I think I got a single and grounded out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Still, I mean, you get to say you got a hit on a, on a major league field. Yeah, and it was a little like swinging bunt too. <laughs> <laughs> but one of my one of my friends actually hit one, so that was that was cool for him. One of my friends I've always played with too. Um, and you always, I mean, it's really like you always think of like, oh my god, a home run at Bush Stadium. But when you're like. 19 20 21 years old like college age i mean you're playing on the same dimension field every game it's just bush stadium seems bigger it's the same 330 feet 400 feet to center it's the same dimensions but it's just you always think of it as bigger but um yeah one of my uh zach kraus shout out zach kraus he uh he hit he hit one there and that was a really cool moment because i've always played with him too yeah you you definitely see the the camaraderie and at both matt and i are former baseball players. I mean, not, not up in the college level, but we certainly can relate to the, you know, the team bonding and just being able to, to hang out with your buddies after a game or BP or anything like that. It's a, it's a really sweet experience. Yeah. It's awesome. 
But um, we're, we're going to still not stay too far away from TikTok, but we're going to be a little bit relevant here. So um, as Matt and, and I mentioned, there's there's a lot of, quote, family involved in, in your TikToks. Um, yeah, I, I guess the the first question, ideally, is does your family see what you put out? And two, how does your family feel about some of the content that's posted with your TikTok? Yeah, I, they don't. My dad is a guy that has never had social media. He refuses to get it. Uh, my mom has a TikTok. I actually posted part 100 of the mom series. She was featured in it because that's what everyone wanted. Um, and she gained like 2,000 followers from that video. So that was kind of cool. Um, yeah, I mean, my dad's, I don't even think my dad's ever seen it one time. But he hears me, he hears me yelling. This is where I'm at. Or he hears me yelling and stuff. And he, he knows that um, it's something I do. I mean, the other day, me and my dad were at, I actually got it on my vlog. Me and my dad were at the fireworks stand and like everyone there noticed me. And, and everyone, there was like three guys that wanted pictures. And he was like, it was just like, it's weird. It's weird, man. Like, especially with your dad, like, cause he was like, wait, what? Like, why do people want pictures with him? Cool. <laughs> he was just laughing about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, going back to that, I mean, my sister has TikTok. My mom does, but she doesn't use it. My mom uses Twitter a lot. Um, and my dad doesn't have any of it. Yeah. You will eventually come to find out. I mean, especially my father, my father had absolutely nothing until he started getting his social media and then. TikTok was just one of those off ones. And, you know, Venmo is another thing, too. That's what freaks you out, because both my dad and I have the same names. And I thought somebody was hacking into my account and sending money via Venmo. So <laughs> <laughs> not not the best experience there, Trevor. But um, I'm sure. yeah. Um, so even with your your family, it sounds that your family is very supportive at least or or almost like trying to understand the concept a little bit but very supportive in the role that you want to go for at least yeah i mean they they get it they i mean i still live at home i'm almost 21 years old and in less than two months now and like i i mean everyone goes on different paths i feel like after high school you really don't realize that that's a big thing that i just want to say real quick you do not realize how big how like once you get done with high school, you're not going to talk to or see 90% of the people that you saw in high school ever again. It was so weird. Um, and looking back on it, it's so weird, but, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, they get it. I mean, they know at first they were like, okay, why are you buying like these expensive shoes? And I'm like, okay, well it's because I want to try to look the part on Instagram because people are starting to follow me on Instagram. So I want to look the part with nice clothes and nice shoes. So I'm buying this. And they were like, well, you should be saving that money. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm reinvesting this money. Like you don't get it. Cause they, when, when I say reinvest to them, they think that's more like building a business. My dad owns a landscaping business. So when he thinks of reinvest, he thinks of like buying tools, buying property, buying, you know what I mean? He doesn't think of it as buying clothes, buying shoes, buying computers and cameras and all that stuff. So it's, it's, it's a different thing, but they, I think they're kind of starting to come around and I mean, they have been coming around. They know that I make uh, decent money from it. I mean, I bought this freaking like thousand dollar camera set up. Uh, my, my just bought this MacBook like a month ago. I mean, all the, all the clothes and stuff. And I'm not, I, I think that they more, cause I keep all my money like in different. Um, cause eventually what I want to do is give, my parents like a car or money or something like that with this and make it out, make a YouTube video out of it. So I don't want them to know how much money I have. So I put like, I keep some of it on my bank account to where they can see, but I keep a lot of it in Venmo and PayPal and cash app. Um, cause I really don't want them to know necessarily how much I have or, or how much I'm making or anything like that. And it kind of, it's kind of like a snowball effect too. At first I was making like, $25 here, $30 there. And it kind of just rises and rises and rises. And, and it's almost like every deal is, is bigger and bigger and bigger. And, um, so, so yeah, but I mean, going back to your question, yeah, I mean, they see they're supportive. They see that I'm making money. And, um, I told them, I was just like, they, and they, the thing is too, is like, I'm 21 years old. I lived away at college for six months. They know that, you know, I know how to take care of myself and all this stuff. So I kind of, I kind of do my thing and they just, kind of leave me alone and they kind of get it now i mean at first when i'd be screaming they would come in and be like what the, what the fuck are you doing and I'd just be like, I'm making a video so now i'd be screaming for two, an hour straight and they'll never even bat an eye so um 
it's they come around to all of it. I mean, they they see they don't. I I said the thing about the bank account part to kind of lead into. They don't know how much money I'm making, but they see that I'm like investing it in myself and stuff like that. So I think they know that I'm being smart with it and and trying to build something. So so we're not going to see any money in any mattresses, is what you're telling me. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe one day. You might maybe you might have to. It. Before I give it away. Did you ever watch uh, Wolf of Wall Street? Uh, that's one of my favorite movies. Oh right? my gosh, yeah. That's uh that's cut Matt, you never I don't think you saw I that, never have. You? Yeah, no, I never have. But lame. that's just uh, not what you aspire to be, because I don't think anybody aspires to be the Wolf of Wall Street, yeah. but just where you're getting at. Very successful at your time for that. But um exactly. you know, kind of Trevor, moving off to, to some of your, your digital aspects, um, do you have any like hobbies or interests that uh you have that your followers may not know about i mean like i'm just i'm just so to me i'm focused on like this is a career like i'm like i feel like i'm building a business right now and it's it, it it's hard to it's really hard for other people to understand that when they just see a 15 second video four times a day it's hard to see how much like time and effort it goes into like editing and filming and making smart purchases like with like in this fourth of july vlog i bought a bunch of i spent a bunch of money on fireworks and stuff like that it's it's a lot more than what people just viewing it see and mm -hmm. i mean i have so much respect for people that do it like huge like 10 15 20 million subscribers um because i mean they're working hard and they they everyone just wants to say oh yeah they have all this money blah 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 but i mean it's like still i mean they're working hard for that i mean like really hard and it's not like you clock in you clock out you're always thinking about it you're always working on it you're always thinking about the next thing because you can become irrelevant in a day if you just i mean if 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 the situation's right and you don't post anything or update anything in a day you can become irrelevant so quick so i mean you're always got to think of the next thing or the next move the next video idea all that kind of stuff it's it you, you bring a, a really good point trevor just i i think number one um just exactly that this is totally new i shouldn't say it's completely new but it's it's new to to a, a vast majority of the population and something similar that i don't think is is too much a comparison to tiktok but people who live stream gaming like people think it's the weirdest thing in the world that somebody's watching somebody play a game but then there's also the people that are like they're getting paid to do that and they're like yeah like and then you see so many of these kids i don't want to say kids but so many of these teenagers and young adults people like us who try to run a freaking podcast just trying to see what ways that we can do to not only help us out in the long run but and i think trevor you you kind of put it best in a, in a way that you're saying is it's making you happy. And that's like the best thing that you're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I think you pretty much nailed it there. I mean, I, I'm, I love doing this and I mean, I love just seeing other people be like, Holy crap. He only had like 400 followers and it was so cringy and all this stuff. And now he has 900,000 and like, all like, it's just, it's so, it's so fun to see people just, like eat their words kind of thing it almost scared me when when we had to reschedule the podcast with your introduction like obviously we kind of wanted to say you know has over this many thousand followers on tiktok and then by that next week we sat down together i'm like oh my god he went up like thirty thousand within the next week <laughs> you know yeah. it's almost that like scary thing where it's like you know w we were putting bets on if it was going to be a million by that time but you're almost close to nine hundred thousand, correct um, yeah i think uh 800 and 79 i think when i when i got on here but yeah i mean that once i hit a million that'll be that'll be a really cool thing do you ever sit on i don't want to say like you you should I, I mean leadership books that i read is like you should never put yourself on top of a pedestal with um you know the sense of followers or, or the people that are you manage but do you ever just like take a step back and you think to yourself like 870 and almost 890 or, or 900,000 people like your content, watch your content. And, you know, here's two people right here, Matt and I, that, you know, absolutely adore your content. But do you ever just yeah. sit back and think like, wow, like this is a lot of people? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, not really. <laughs> I, I'm, I, like I, I seriously, I'm, I'm just so focused on 
being bigger and building it up to where I don't even, I, I don't, I, I don't do that. I really don't think 900,000, like, I, I, I mean, like you can say it in a bunch of, I mean, you can say whatever you want by this comment about me, but like, I do not think 900,000 is that many people like people. I mean, people have five, 10, 15, fucking 70 million, like Charlie D'Amelio, like they have so many followers. It is absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, those, those are the type of people that blow up overnight for either being cute or for being, you know, I, I want to say there's two ways to blow up overnight. It's either being attractive or doing something that no one's done yet and, and it has seen yet. Um, and I think being attractive is like the easiest way to do that. Um, boy or girl, no matter the age. I mean, if you're attractive, people are going to watch. It's just how it is. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, it's, it's really, I'm just focused on growing it so much. I never do that. I mean, mm -hmm. to me, sometimes I look at it and I'm like, damn, I should have more and all this stuff. Like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not even saying that to be cocky or anything. I just feel like, I just feel like I'm not done. And this is what I want to do. I want to, and I want to, once I get to the point where I can give, I want to give as much as I can and make as many people happy as I can. Cause I always love making other people happy and stuff. So I want to like give to my parents and my family and all that, all that good stuff. Yeah. That's, that's pretty self-rewarding. And you know, I think you'll eventually, you said you'll turn 21 in two months. I think you'll find out when the bouncer checks your ID Matt knows this, Matt and I know this. We both Matt and I got a face for radio, so we have to really depend on us being twenty one to actually get into a club. But <laughs> yeah, but um, you'll you'll find that out eventually once you turn twenty one. You'll you'll figure that out, Trevor. So yeah. <laughs> now let's kind of put ourselves in in a situation here, Trevor. You okay. you really talk about TikTok and and how much it's benefited you and and how much you know the journey that you've had it's not about the destination it's more of the journey that you've had as far as starting from literally your parents checking in on you every 20 minutes after you yell something to now being like okay this is done but if tiktok did not exist what would you think your career path would be or what would you think your like path would be um i wouldn't have gone to college or actually i would have gone to college and i would have just skimmed by um getting the the lowest GPA you possibly could keep playing baseball and then I would have used my baseball experience and I would have made my own baseball program and I would have, I would have owned it and I would have done it better than anyone else has done it. Except for, I mean, I just like look at clubs and I'm just like, that could be done. There's certain things that could be done so much better. And I mean, I even think right now that would be something I'd be interested in doing, like starting a baseball program and let like, if I got to the point where I had the money to start a baseball program and then let someone else run it for me, but me like have the say in how things run and stuff and not really have to have that much influence on it and just let someone else do it. I think I still would because like all the people that run baseball organizations and stuff, they're, they're so they're still like older guys living in the past. And I'm just like, people don't want to see that. People want to see, new stuff. I think I could run a high school baseball organization and have an Instagram page with like a hundred thousand followers and just post like the coolest stuff ever and make money on brand deals off Instagram pages. And I think people are people, they're like starting to come around and post a lot of baseball content clubs specifically are, but I think I could just do it so much better and, and make highlight videos and make, you know, just be, just be the best guy to do it. Um, so I think that's definitely, and I've always just thought, Ever since I was like 15 or 16, like this could be done so much better. And, um, and just all this stuff. I mean, just certain clubs in St. Louis, like I know that these clubs are just raking in the money from these players and stuff. I mean, why wouldn't you buy, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 acres of land, build your own thing and host tournaments there and, and do it the way you want to do it. And I mean, Hey, it's going to cost, you know, whatever, $50 million or whatever, but you're going to make that back in like five years. And then you're going to just, it's going to be, I mean, I just think that it could be done so much better, but I, I have such a passion for that, that I would still do that. Um, but yeah, that's what I would be trying to do. I wouldn't, I was going to get a degree in uh, business with a minor in sports management um, to do that. And then I, I just wasn't into it at all anymore. If you, but yeah. I mean, I still would. I think, I think especially in, in an industry like that, um, experience goes a lot farther than a degree well if you build it they will come that's a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah uh so i have two very important questions 
uh, to uh, kind of wrap this up. Uh, the first one's very, very important. How did you learn and at what age did you learn to bark exactly like a dog? Because if, <laughs> if you're listening to this and haven't heard Trevor bark like a dog, it legit sounds like an act, like it sounds better than my dog's bark. How did you learn <laughs> you to do that? Should, you should link a video of me doing that. I, sh- I, I will. We yeah, will. We'll In do the that. Yeah. Um, no, there was this Hispanic guy on my team for community college in the fall that I remember he did on the first day. And, um, and I, I like I, my, so my dad owns a landscaping business and he has nine employees and they're all Hispanic. And it's so funny because they all have little, little like weird things that they can do like bark or like I, one of my dad's guys can like, I remember when I was little, he, he could do the best, like pull your thumb off your hand ever. Like they all just have these little things they can do. And, um, and his was his was that, and I thought it was the funniest thing ever, and um, and so I just like started doing it, and I was terrible, and then I it, I just kind of started doing it well, and people like it. I think one of those videos got like fifty k likes. <laughs> it is it's it, it's insane. Like you hear it, and you're like, what the hell? Like is there an actual dog in the background, or like, but yeah. like it's actually you're like it's hysterical. Yeah. Um, so yeah. then to, maybe to kind of wrap this up. So, uh, we have a segment at the end of our show called take it. You, you're, you're, Trevor's going to be joining us. So stay tuned, uh, to the end of the episode for take it. So what I wanted to do here to kind of get you familiar with the segment before we go out there is I'm going to throw three that we've done out there and you can just do like one word answer and probably split the vote because Mike and I can never agree on anything. <laughs> so, uh, first one is Batman, a superhero. Yes. Ha! Okay, not off to a great start. <laughs> but moving on to the second one, waffles or pancakes? Pan... Waffles. No, okay, no, there we you, go. you yes. took that back. No, no, he said waffles. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one, this is a little out there. Uh, are you naked if you're wearing socks? Yes. Okay, that was a good right. answer. Right. That was a great <laughs> answer. Um, Trevor, before we, we go into our, our actual take it um, and into some sports possibly by, by the chance of this, you know, the edit of the podcast, I should say, um, uh-huh. any final thoughts or, or sayings to, to give to our funny business audience as far as uh, you being yeah. on the show or anything like that? Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't I haven't checked out. Actually, I did check out your page, but I didn't I didn't look at the viewers. So I don't know how many people you actually have watching. But if anyone is watching this. Like people, people give up too easily doing like this or anything. People give up way too easily. Like you just got to keep doing it. And, and I mean, if it doesn't work after a year or two years, I mean, you don't have to do it full time, but just don't give up. People are just so easy to just give up on things and not try and not follow through with think with goals that they had one day. And then a week later, they're like, all right, I don't have a hundred thousand followers. So I'm just going to give up. And that goes for anything too. Like people just give up too easily, man. You, you got to stick with things. That wow! I could have said it better myself. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like Tre- Trevor's dealing with a, a swarm of of insects somewhere. As yeah. far as it, <laughs> yeah, I just burned it. Oh my god! Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that was awesome! Massive fly. Yeah. Oh hey, I gosh. mean, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you listen. We don't know what's going down in Missouri as far as the flies, but. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how the hell it got in my basement. <laughs> oh, man. Matt, can you believe we're finally doing a podcast? I know, I've been so excited to start one, but it seems so easy for us to get started. Actually, Matt, it was really easy. It was all because of Anchor. Anchor? Yes, Anchor. Anchor is by far the easiest way to get a podcast started. Anchor is free to anyone that wants to start a podcast. It's easy for beginners with the creation tools that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. We also have it nice that Anchor does all the work in distributing our podcasts to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and other platforms. Matt, we can even make money from our podcast. Did you say money? Yes, you heard me right, Matt. Money. We can make it with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Wow, I might want to start another podcast on my own soon. That sounds like a great idea, Matt. You could do it today by downloading the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That is anchor.fm. Now back to the podcast. 
Okay, let's slide into the sports segment for today. So we just have one for you today, but it's it's a it's a big one. So we've talked about UFC a few times on the show, and this Saturday is UFC 251. It is one of the big. You usually the big UFC events. They go like, for example, 249. Then they'll have 250, and this one happens to be 251, and it's going to be a great great night. There is some big news this weekend about it. So. The main card always has five fights. This one is special because there's three title fights. So a regular fight is three rounds. Title fights and main events are five rounds. Okay. So we have three of the five fights on the main card going five rounds. But the big news was for the main event. It was the welterweight division. The matchup was supposed to be Kamaro, uh, Kamaro Usman versus Gilbert Burns. Both great fighters. Usman is the champion in the uh, in the division, and Burns had to pull out because he tested positive for coronavirus. So we hope he's doing well. Oh God! Yes. So everyone was very concerned that the main event wasn't going to happen, but not so fast because his uh, Usman's new competitor is none other than Jorge Masvidal, who Mike, I don't know if you know this, but the last fight that he had was against Nate Diaz, and to put it lightly, they said the winner of the uh, fight would be the baddest mother trucker on the planet. They this, People were naming it the baddest mother trucker fight. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, and he won. <laughs> now, what's funny about this is he, he took on this fight six days, so he announced it Sunday, okay. six days before the fight he took it. What's interesting is usually these guys – after a fight, they'll take a little break, and then they'll they'll figure out who their next opponent is, and then they'll have what is called a camp. So a camp is basically them working with their trainers and you know health staff and all of the, all the people they use for usually three four months, maybe sometimes two months, and they'll train specifically for that opponent. So like Usman was training probably for three months yeah. to fight Gilbert Burns, and now both guys in six days have to learn other guys' techniques. So Masvidal is, I, I think he's crazy for taking on something like this in six days to possibly be the champion of the welterweight division. Uh, I, so the question what I wanted to ask you is, well, first your thoughts on the whole thing. Yeah. And then second of all, what sport would be the hardest to prepare for, like professional sport, within a week's notice? Oh, God. Well, I guess my thoughts first. Uh, I, I feel like, for that it was more so just so the pay-per-view would be balanced you can imagine that match itself being taken away off the card and literally i think everybody would think that where's my money back why am i not getting my full pay-per-view that i wanted to order do they still do pay-per-views they do this one's yeah yeah, ufc does a new thing with espn where they do all the pay-per-view through them i'm still surprised that there's such thing as a pay-per-view now now that we have all these subscription times and all these things, but nonetheless, <laughs> but I, I think in preparation time, I know like you literally see, I mean, from the times that I've saw, saw matches, not that I'm fully uh, passionate about these matches that go up against each other, but when I do see them, you see the hype videos of them preparing for the match and, you know, kind of talking about what's going through their mind as far as facing off against their opponent. And they're specifically doing things that are tailored to the opponent and for him to try to almost chime in is the best way to put it. Uh, and especially for some type of, you know, fighting. I mean, I guess this may kind of lead into one thing that may not be. But uh, let's just take basketball, for example. Basketball, you literally have a week to the team. Like, you got to know their plays. You got to know what their, you know, their tendencies are. got to know what their best point guard is or what their best shooter or their best scorer is. With the fighter... You literally are dealing with one on one, mano y mano against this individual. And it's almost kind of like this big test. Like it's between you and this big test. And there's so many aspects of it that I I just think it's pretty crazy. Now, to me, I understand that he's the, you know, the baddest mother trucker that uh, (laughs) I like how you put that. Um, The baddest mother trucker that uh, anybody, you know, goes up against. But. I don't think it's not going to have the pop as it did with the original card because I feel like it's just more of a toss-in 
because I feel like you'll have more of a pop with the previous match. And then when it comes to this match itself, it's kind of like, eh, they just kind of threw it together. I think you'll see that more as it'll, it'll look more thrown together than other matches. I actually, uh, from what I've seen, I think fans are a lot more excited for Masvidal because he's becoming like one of the biggest stars in the sport. And people seem like super excited. Like when he won the the fight, I believe he won against Nate Diaz, who is another great fighter, beat mm-hmm. Conor McGregor. Um, like people were so amped for that fight. And then afterwards they wanted him to face Usman. So I think people got the fight that they wanted. Um, I, I just, I if I was Masvidal, I th- also this is the first, uh, main event on Fight Island. Ooh. Yeah, so people are really excited. And the the whole card is going to be good. I'll say the other two title fights. Uh, the Felterweight division, Alexander Volkanovsky is the champion going up against Max Holloway. And then the Bantamweight division, I believe it is pronounced Peter Jan and Jose Aldo. So it's, it's, it's really setting up to be a great fight. And then once again, I've said it before, Dana White, best commissioner in sports, you know, it, only he could fix the main card like a week before when someone tests positive for coronavirus. Like no one else could have done that but him. Unless you're like Vince McMahon who does WWE and puts a last minute, you know, last minute scratch in the, <laughs> the WWE championship. But we a little bit of a difference from UFC to WWE, <laughs> to, just a little bit. But well, I'm definitely, I, I'm definitely gonna be watching this weekend. I don't know if you will, but if anyone's interested, like I said, pay per view I believe is on ESPN. And if you really don't feel like paying for it, I don't suggest this. I don't condone this. But there's ways you can find it online. Like it, and, it's, I really like I, watching UFC. It is so much fun to watch. Like I really do recommend everybody tuning in at least once. And Matt's ESPN Plus account password is... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm not giving that up. You know, no, no way. <laughs> but I think the backtrack as far as uh, your other question is what other sport you would think would be challenging within a week's notice. I kind of ruled out basketball because I feel like in any given week, I remember we had a week in order for us to prepare. I, I don't... <sighs> See, we went over some of the most challenging feats in sports, but I feel like horse racing is probably the the most challenging thing you have to prepare because you're not only preparing yourself in trying to get on that horse. Like if you told me, Mike, you're going to be in the trip, like you're going to be uh, Kentucky Derby, you're going to be in the Kentucky Derby. I'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah, I'd have to get used to the horse. I'd have to get used to the horse's tendencies. I'd have to get used to caring for the horse, training for it, making sure that I don't fall off when I'm riding it. Like there is so, and especially they bet on the horse. They don't bet on the person. They bet on the horse. So let's say I got, you know, the only horse that is t- totally coming to my mind right now is American Pharaoh. Um, right. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> you gave me yep. a weird look. <laughs> no. Yes. You're right. A little little side note that was the name of the funnel that we used to do in back in our college days so <laughs> that's why i was like is that really he, a name? I, like, I, I think american pharaoh may have been the last horse that actually won the triple crown okay I, yes uh, yeah i think so i remember that growing he was close at least popularity but you know let's say i had american pharaoh and people are betting on this because of you know i don't want to say the name but that's truly it the name so for me to jump in as the the equestrian um it's well yeah the equestrian that's like i feel like that's the most challenging aspect is horse racing <laughs> yeah that one and the only other one i really thought of was maybe swimming like if you weren't preparing to be oh. in a swim meet or to like do a swimming event and then you got a week's notice because they do train i know people say oh swimming's like i can swim you can't do what professional swimmers do no nope. those guys are a hell of athletes especially butterfly uh backstroke like I can, I can stay afloat is the best way to put it. I don't know if it's, it's just the the usual standard. I forget what that's called. Is that like a freestyle? I believe a freestyle. Yeah. yeah. Like I can freestyle. I can stay afloat, but I can't do a butterfly. I can't do a backstroke. I can't. I'll kick, very, anyone, very I'll kick anyone's ass if in a doggy paddle competition. <laughs> That'd be fantastic if that was a, an Olympic yes, sport. Yes. <laughs> so all in all, very excited for UFC 251 this weekend. All right, it is now time for Take It. So for this week, obviously we welcome back Trevor Abney on for Take It. First ever guest we had on for this segment. So we've talked about Hooters. So I thought 
what better debate could we have than Trevor? I'll let you go first. What's better, boneless or bone in wings? Oh God, that that depends where you get it from. <laughs> it, it, it literally depends where you get it from. I would say, oh God. I mean, it also depends on the sauce and. I feel like boneless are just chicken tenders with wing sauce on them, but I don't know. I would say from a really good wing place, if you were if you were to go to the best wing place in the world and have a choice between boneless and bone in, I would do bone in. But flat. Yes. Oh, flats. Flats are infinitely better than drums. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. I would. I would definitely choose bone in as well. I feel like there's a lot more juicier, and I. Yeah. I, I, I already see Mike's. Mike, go ahead. So, so we're not going to talk about the fact of boneless, boneless wings, how, how easy they are to eat. But that's part of the beauty of eating bone-in wings is like licking your fingers afterwards, right? Yeah, yeah, and getting all the meat off. Exactly. And, and it's a different taste. It's like mm-hmm. you're literally eating a chicken finger with wing sauce. Mm-hmm. Matt, was this whole I, point? I mean, I, I personally, okay, I don't <laughs> think Buffalo Wild Wings has the best wings ever. I've, I've had a lot better wings than Buffalo Wild Wings. But I agree. I get the bone-in wings from Buffalo Wild Wings because I just don't think that they have the greatest wings. I agree. Bon- boneless wings, like they're too inconsistent. Sometimes they just they're just like chicken nuggets, or like it's it's not it's like bone in wings are more consistent. I yeah. I I really feel like see it's tough because see the the fun fact is um uh, Trevor Matt and I are kind of I don't want to say local to the area, but like we've obviously been to a lot of like restaurants that you're saying like really good restaurants have like some really good boneless and and bone in, but. I feel like for me, all the restaurants I've been to has had some pretty sweet boneless wings when it comes time for it. And, you know, I know you were saying boneless at first, Trevor, but since you are a guest on the show, we will let it slide. But <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like boneless, like, it, number one, I mean, if you really are not a big fan of this whole, like, I don't want to say, like, wing sauce being on your hands. And I know that's, like, somewhat of a guilty pleasure for some people. Like, you have the fork. You can stick the fork in a bunch of boneless wings and you can eat them. Like, I feel like it's number one, COVID friendly because you don't have to literally pick up your hands and you know don't know who touched it last. But um, yeah. you also have the sense of cleanliness at the end. Like, you go on a date, Trevor. We know you're a good guy. Probably been on a lot of dates before. But would you rather want to just literally have your hands just completely like disgusting at the end of the night, or do you feel like? Going a little reserve and grabbing a fork and kind of being a little yeah. uh, cleanliness on that. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing about that: I would never take a girl on a date to get wings. Like a, that's like a, a real, yes. that's, that's a good like point. A, like a real, like, <laughs> like if I was to, if I was to meet a girl for the first time and go on a date, I would never take her to get wings. I'd take her to go sit down and get some like pasta or something like that. Olive that, Garden. No, actually, I would I would go bigger than that. I mean, I always. I would I would go to um, we have really fancy Italian restaurants on this uh, in this area of St. Louis called the Hill and there's a place called Charlie Gito's. Um, I, w- I would definitely go fancier than Olive Garden. <laughs> that, yeah. I, I'm like I'm like when it comes to that I I don't care I want I want to have a good time and I, I money doesn't really matter I just want it to be nice. Mm, that's wow. Like I would yeah I mean it's I would I would take and I have a I have a girlfriend and. Um, I, we've been dating, like we dated for two years and then we were broke up for like six months. And then we just started dating again, like a month and a half ago. And when we were dating, because now it's kind of more casual, like we'll just go get some freaking like subway or something. But, um, <laughs> when we were first dating, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we would, I would take her and we would do like dinner and then we would like go in the arch or like, just do like, we would just go all out for it. But yeah, I mean, I, Going back to that, I would if, there, if it was an important first date with a girl I saw something with, I would take her to go eat extravagantly. Yeah, you yeah you don't get you can't get wings on a first date. No. That's just not a thing. Absolutely not. Trevor, what's your what's your favorite kind of like sauce? Oh, I, I like anything spicy. I love spicy. Like like not even I'm not talking like Frank's Red Hot. I'm talking like spicy spicy. Like burn your mouth off. Like I did the. I did the Blazing Wing Challenge when I was 14 years old, and I finished it, and I got the T-shirt and everything oh. from it from Buffalo Wild Wings. That's that's awesome. Uh, so yeah. about Hooters, uh, do you do breaded or uh, no, not breaded wings at Hooters? 
not British. No British. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. sometimes the breading can get too much, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have a confession to make all y'all. Okay. I've never been to Hooters before. Oh my God. Oh God. <laughs> I knew that was That's the best place. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe Hooters will sponsor me one day and pay me, and hopefully they won't look at this. But I never. I don't really think they have the greatest food ever. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been to one in a while, but you know, it's people go for the atmosphere. Yeah, feel like yeah sometimes. People, people go for different things. Yes. Well, well Trevor, it's I... more beers and beers and boobs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, Trevor, I don't want to put you on the spot as far as an acting, but I feel like to to end the podcast, I know your long face isn't on right now, but if you can, uh, could you? I because Matt and I both are like, what is he going to say? What is he going to do? Like for this whole entire time we've had you on the show, but thank you so much for being on the show once again. Yeah. But can you kind of lead us out with either one of your sayings from CEO of Dad or Mom? Could be Hooters, could be not. Um, not necessarily the, yeah. the, the exchange between back and forth, but whatever you feel is appropriate. I just say, can I just say like, Hey dad, I can do my fingers too. Please. <laughs> All right. All right. Ready? Yep. Hey dad. <laughs> uh, that was, that's perfect. Oh my goodness. Trevor, Trevor, thank you so much for, for being a part of the podcast and, uh, you know, no good problem. luck with your success. Thanks, man. Yeah, it was fun guys. Thank you guys. Thanks, man. Wow, what a phenomenal chat with Trevor Abney. We will uh, include all of his links and all of his social media profiles if you are interested in uh, tuning in and listening to him or watching him on TikTok. But Matt, I I couldn't say a better podcast myself, man. It, it was it was an awesome time. It was just like so fun for to talk to him. And you guys should go give him a follow. He's hysterical on TikTok, and he's got a, a pretty good Instagram page too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly. So, and on um, YouTube as well. His his yes. videos are are very good. Very very good, man. Yes. So so good. So we're we're really excited to see him grow and prosper. And we could just say, hey, we 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 knew him before a million until he got <laughs> famous. So, <laughs> um, but but that concludes today's podcast, ladies and gentlemen. If you loved it, um, please rate us five stars and re- leave us a review. If you are on Apple Podcasts, that helps us out and get the next podcast out to the next listener. Um, If you are new to this podcast, welcome. Glad you stuck around for the most part of it. Um, And make sure you give us a follow on our social media at Funny Business Entertainment on Facebook, Funny Business Entertainment on Instagram, and Funny Business EN on Twitter. We do host a live stream. We do our best at least once a week on our YouTube page. So if you're into Fortnite, if you're into NBA 2K, um, if you're into just chatting casual co- at, casual at some Tuesdays. point at some point i'm going to try out warzone for the first time oh. so i think i'm literally just going to live stream as i figure it out so don't expect <laughs> any dubs but yeah. expect some comedy yeah expect some <laughs> funny expect some funny business while we're at it so <laughs> well until next time guys uh hope you had a great fourth of july and we will see you guys on the next episode stay safe everyone <laughs>